Welcome back to the wild. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome back to the wild. I'm bringing this from the sunny, the famous, the beautiful Glencoe in Scotland. So today's review is all about, one second, the Fuji film 100 to 400 millimeter f-stop 4.5 to 5.6 telephoto lens. This beauty right here that I called Thea. I might have to go under the trees. <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to do a rev I'm going to have to go under the trees. <laughs> and this is so bad. If I show you what I'm looking at, it's just grey everywhere. <laughs> Found a spot under some trees, so I will continue. So I did a review of the Fujifilm 100 to 400 millimeter about just under a year ago. And I wanted to do another one because this one was specifically, specifically about wildlife photography. And in particular, my trip to East Africa, where I was on safari and hiking to see wildlife through Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And I took this lens with me and it was fantastic. So I just wanted to share my experience, just some of the main key points of why it was great when I was away and just how it held up really. So that's what I thought I'd do. So without further ado, let's crack on with this wet review. <laughs> So when I was on safari, I was being thrown about in the safari truck. I was being knocked around. This is dunking off things. Uh, it's dusty, it's gritty, it's dirty, it's warm. All of these things, things that photographers go, ugh, when they think of their equipment being banged against metal and stuff. But, but this lens is fantastic. And actually I didn't have the lens hood on when I was away because it was just too bulky. But if you have a look at it, it has not scuffed once. Now I took this everywhere on the safari for a whole month, a whole month of safaris away in Africa, camping, trucking it, walking through jungles, and it has not got one dent on it. And I've dunked this off stuff, so it's done fantastic. So I was really, really pleased with its durability and how solid the lens was and how it held up in such a harsh environment. In particular, the mechanic mechanics of it, or the mechanisms, I should say, dust could get into all these parts like this, but it's still smooth, absolutely fine. And the great thing about this lens is it's not fixed at one length like this, it is compact. And this was really handy to put in my camera bag and to travel with, because when you're on a plane, you need to think of weight, you need to think about your other stuff fitting in your camera bag. This fit fine, it was brilliant. And I really like that it's compact. You can pack it all down, not a problem. Like I said, I didn't put the lens hood on it most of the time, just for space, uh, but like this, it did great, it was brilliant. And the next point I want to discuss is ease of use. Again, this lens is fantastic. Everything is within reach. All the buttons, all the dials, everything you need. Your little tilt button to make it horizontal portrait. Everything's there. So when you're shooting through your viewfinder, you do not need to take your eye away, basically, that's what I'm trying to say. You can do everything from here. You can adjust your aperture dial, everything from this position, which is great. In terms of build quality and durability, it's done fantastic. And I'm so pleased it did, because I was really worried. It's an expensive bit of kit, you know, and I was worried that it would get damaged whilst I was away, but it's not. It still works perfectly fine. And it is truly weather sealed and truly strong. And it did great, so that was perfect. Now, when you're in a safari truck, that's the engine. Then you've got ah, 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 other people in the truck. So you got ah, ah, everything's moving around. Then I'm moving, trying to do this. It is really hard to shoot still pictures. Well, not just so much the stills, but the 
footage, the filming is really hard in a safari truck when you're not using a gimbal, which I do not use. I was handheld. I didn't have time or space to use a tripod. Um, it was hard. It was really tricky. So yeah, you've got a lot of movement you've got to compensate for when shooting with this lens, without a gimbal, without a tripod, from your confined space in a safari truck. And I found it really tricky. But give the lens its due, it did really well. I got footage in terms of stills and for, um, filming and it did brilliant and I got a lot. Um, there was some footage I kind of couldn't use because I was just moving too much. But that isn't down to the lens, that's myself and the situation, uh, which was a shame. So I have tested the new 150 to 600 millimeter and I found the stability in that just a little bit more advanced than in this. Uh, but you've got other pros with this lens over that lens. Uh, but for this lens, it did do really well. And to be fair, I did get a hell of a lot of footage and filming with it. So I can't really complain, but it's just something to bear in mind. Shooting on a safari truck is challenging. <laughs> yes. Eric, here he comes. Come here, dumpling, quick. Eric is here. He's just short and you can't see him. But Eric is here. There he is. Eric's here. Okay, so the next point I wanna talk about, if you can hear me, cause it's windy, <laughs> is image quality. And this is where the 100, 400 millimeter won for me because it was fantastic. Uh, before I went away, I got the X-H2S cause I wanted to go away with a camera that had good filming capabilities and photography at the same time. I was looking at purchasing the 150 to 600 millimeter. Couldn't afford it at the same time. <laughs> it's too much. Um, so I was like, oh, I really hope uh, the 100 to 400 holds up. I was super worried about it. Got out there, got away. Yeah, it performed brilliantly. It really did. I was so surprised with how it performed uh, on so many levels, which was fantastic. So when I say image quality, I mean this in terms of sharpness in clarity in the depth of the textures tones and just actually recognizing what an object is because sometimes we say sharpness but when you zoom in it's just like eh. but this was actually depth of an image that's why i think the key is for image quality is the depth of that image and your ability to it will recognize what you're actually looking at and this performed fantastically i've got detailed shots of lions of like scars on their face i've got cheetahs with blood on their whiskers or elephants like the texture of the creases of their skin like this camera and this lens together worked beautifully and they picked up some magic in the scene and the creatures and yeah i was totally blown away so i've got all these examples to show you because they were fantastic they really were and i was really chuffed and i was just like wow even down to things like um hair of like zebras and just stuff like this it just performed great and yeah I was just really surprised I wasn't too sure what to expect from it being an older lens but yeah it performed brilliantly and a key area where it performed fantastically which I will touch upon more in the aperture section was in low light it did fantastic and having that capability to have a wider aperture is so important in some situations which I would talk more why you'll see why. So overall, I was blown away by the standard of quality you get from the 100 to 400 millimeter. I think it did fantastic. So much so, I've actually printed out uh, some of my shots, which I don't normally do, but I have printed them and blown up, even on a big scale, you still get that refinement of your image. And I'm so pleased with it because there's nothing more rewarding when you go somewhere, especially like thousands of miles away from where you live, seeing like the pinnacle of like a photographer's dream, which is Africa, it's like safari. And then to blow up those images and them to be like such good quality. And yeah, it's brilliant. I was just like, oh wow. <laughs> I was pretty happy with it because I've never blown up my stuff before. So it was great. So yeah, overall image quality, fantastic for this lens. It works beautifully for wildlife photography. Um, my actual autofocus and tracking of subjects as well on the X-H2S works fantastic with the 100 to 400 millimeter and the two together just married this beautiful union. And yeah, I got some really beautiful shots, which I'm so happy with. And this is why I wanted to go away with a good setup and it turns out it was so, so yeah, superb image quality. Yes. Okay, so the next point I want to touch upon is aperture. 
aperture. But there will only be two points for this because uh, there's not really too much to say, but it's just important points. So point number one is why I love this lens, the 100 to 400 millimeter f-stop 4.5 to 5.6 is because of that wider aperture and it is so valuable and so handy in loads of different scenarios and situations but in particular low light i did hiking in uganda um, to see one mountain gorillas and two to see chimpanzees and in both these situations it was dark i was in a jungle that was like canopies were just like this everywhere and I was like my heart sunk everyone in the group their heart sunk and we're all like this is really dark <laughs> I had to put my ISO like so high disturbingly high like I got the sweats like at how high it was I was like this is really high ISO but <laughs> that being said the aperture being 4.5 did save me a bit because it meant that I could still have as reasonably high shutter speed because so I was handheld gorillas are moving chimpanzees are moving but I could also have that wider aperture as much as I could because in a lot of situations especially with the gorillas they were like literally right in front of me so I didn't need to go to that 400 millimeter I could stay at 100 they were right there and I could use and utilize that wide aperture so actually it was a lifesaver in my situation when I was away which was brilliant so yeah aperture wise I really like the fact that this lens is 4.5 to 5.6 it's brilliant and with that as well you can still get that lovely bokeh that dreamy effect and I love bokeh I normally shoot with prime so for me I've got the 23 the 33 the 35 the 56 they are my lenses at the moment because I love prime lenses and it's hard for me when I go to a lens that's like starts at 2.8 with the f-stop and this one's at 4.5 so you can imagine what I'm like <laughs> but you can still get bokeh you can still get that lovely dreamy creamy and compression with a telephoto lens which is fantastic so yeah it's been great so aperture wise I think I didn't really think about it loads before but it saved me on so many occasions and actually gave me a lovely feel to my photography as well uh, yeah and it did fantastic so another thumbs up for how it works practically in the field on safari in dark lit places because that's important <laughs> okay so the next point I want to talk about was filming and I did a lot of filming with the 100 400 millimeter and again it was fantastic I, I got so much footage it was so sharp so detailed and so clear and crisp uh, there's just the occasion, like I said, where I was wobbling so much that I couldn't really use the footage, which I'm a bit gutted about. But when the conditions were right and it was nice still and the people in my truck weren't like, yeah, a lion like I was, <laughs> um, I could get some footage, which was great. And it did brilliant. It really, really did. It did fantastic. Um, at the time, I was quite new to filming, so I only shot in 4K. Ideally, I should have shot an F-log. Uh, I just feel like it would have been better, but I didn't. What can you do? and yeah the finish was still brilliant it's still fantastic and i've got some wonderful footage which i've created some cinematic stuff of so feel free to have a look and i've also done it in my safari vlog itself it shows you more in there about uh, wildlife footage and stuff but i'll show you bits on here as well and there will be more cinematic stuff coming on the way but overall i think the filming was brilliant and yeah it was great so yeah that's what i can really say about it, it was wonderful yes
Okay, it's just to summarize guys, my experience of the Fuji film, 100 to 400 millimeter, S.4.5 to 5.6. The sun is coming out, it's a good day. I'm drying off. <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> so overall, I think this lens performed fantastically. I'm so happy I had it with me on Safari. I'm actually really happy I didn't buy the other lens, the 150 to 600, because actually the animals were too close anyway. I think it would have been too big for my setup where I was on safari, I was camping, I had to kind of go quite light, um, lightweight with a lot of stuff. So for me, actually, this lens performed amazingly. The image quality, the filming, just the aperture, the build, which is the main thing, it's been solid, it is now in the rain. Just all of it, I, I'm just so chuffed that I had it with me and I got to experience uh, the joy of this lens. As if you know about my last review, I called it Thea because it's meant to be the Greek go goddess of sight and she's proved herself again and she did fantastic. Uh, yeah, I can't complain really, I love it. I think it's a fantastic lens and I won't be getting rid of it. And for someone that loves primes to say that they love a telephoto or a zoom lens, it speaks highly of, of this lens, <laughs> which is great. So yes, top marks for this lens, it performed great. If you have any questions about um, just set up or what to think about when preparing to go on safari or what you need, feel free to drop me a comment and I will have a look and I will let you know what I think and how it performed for me. Okay, it's got really dark all of a sudden. It's about to rain. <laughs> the heavens are gonna open on me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review about this lovely lens. I hope it helps. Uh, I hope if you're going on safari, it gives you a flavor of what to think about as well. If it's this lens or whatever, just yeah, puts that ideas out there anyway. If you do have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask, just drop it below. And if I can, I will answer it. Uh, yeah, but let me know your thoughts anyway. And it's raining again, so I'll get going. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay you, stay awesome, stay wild, <laughs> stay free. And until next time, you incredible people, Hopefully it'd be a bit more sunny. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Welcome to sunny Scotland. Raining men. Hallelujah, it's raining men. Flipping it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Eric's down there, but you can't see him because he's short. Oh, you're so heavy. Why are you getting so much bigger? Is that too high? I can never get this thing right. Aperture. Aperture. I'm gonna sneeze one second. Nah, it's gone. Aperture. I'm singing to the trees about aperture. That didn't sit down. That's very okay. Oh. Nah, it's gone. Nope. <laughs> I can't see a thing distracted by some water in a tree and it really pretty. Sunshine, buttercup. Like a witcher or something or no, Blair Witch Project, wrong one. <laughs> okay, let's hope not. Last bit and then we can get a cup of tea. Cup of tea, we love cups of tea in Britain. We love a cup of tea, cup of tea. <laughs> I'm so sorry.